You are welcome to Africa Uncovered YouTube channel. My name is TJ and today once again we're going to be discussing something really really important. Now I want to appreciate all the time that you take to be part of this channel and be part of all the broadcasts that we bring to you so we don't take them for granted. Now today we're going to discuss the BRICS once again. We are looking at what joining BRICS means for Uganda, South Africa, Nigeria, Egypt, Ethiopia and Algeria. We're basically looking at what joining BRICS means to African nations that are already there. A few days ago, the BRICS summit was concluded in Russia in an area called Kazan in the southern part of Russia. And it saw over 30 countries across, across the globe come together to discuss matters of very, very global importance. Now, among those countries are some African countries, notable African countries, and among the attendees were Egypt, South Africa, Ethiopia. And there were also rumors that Congo was in attendance. There were several things that were being discussed on this or in this summit, and among them is ways to see how they can galvanize power as the BRICS force to control the dominancy of the West. The hegemony of the West uh, mounted onto the rest of the world. That's what they were discussing, among so many other things, by the way. But the key point we want to note out here is the new members that were unveiled, among which are African countries. Now, before the summit, the only African countries that were recognized as members of the BRICS were South Africa, who is an original member among the first five, but then Ethiopia and Egypt. But by the end of the summit that just concluded, we had other countries, other African countries, being brought on board as ally countries. And among these is Uganda, Nigeria, Algeria, and who else there? Yeah, those were the new ones, besides the ones that were already there. This brings us to a total of six African countries in the block. Now you can say there is a difference. Yes, there is a little bit of a difference because the three are full-time members or they are full members and the other three are allies. But nevertheless, there is a thin line between that because when you ally with someone, you're basically part of them. So the ones that are allying and the ones that are of full members you know, there's no big difference because these are more like designated countries, meaning that any time X, they are going to become full members. But the benefits are almost equally the same because even those countries that are just called um, aligned countries are going to be literally uh, getting almost the same benefits as the ones that are full members. If let's say someone is borrowing, let's say a country that is an aligned country like Uganda or Algeria or you know Nigeria when they are borrowing from these from any member of the block then you know you find that they are getting a loan at at least two percent interest so what we're going to be looking at today is basically what are the takeaways for these African countries from this block and also what does it mean to them, first of all, to these African countries, but also to the bloc. Let's begin with the bloc. The original BRICS are Brazil, India, okay, I beg your pardon, it's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Those are five countries that are original BRICS. You can already see that on board, as the original members, they had an African country for specific strategic reasons. That this country has 
what it brings on the table. When you try to look at all the countries that are either full members, as in African countries, or even allies, there's something they put on the table. South Africa is a big dog in Africa. South Africa is literally a leading, one of the leading economies in Africa, strategically and in terms of their development, they are among the top three African countries in all aspects, in terms of security, but also in infrastructure and general development. Please share, like, comment and subscribe. So they are influential in Africa and therefore if the BRICS was to tap into Africa, the first country to deal with was not any other but South Africa. So they brought them on board for that reason because they are strategic in their location but also they are influential in the entire continent. The other country that later on joined or was invited to join is Egypt. Egypt is literally a gateway corridor to the Arab world, to the Middle East. Therefore, when you have Egypt on board, even when you, let's say, you want to uh, enter Israel through Egypt, you won't find hard time because this one is already your member who aligns with your strategic importance and reasons so it was important it was that important to have egypt on board the other country is nigeria nigeria is one of the most populated african countries and therefore very very vital for the block when a country has over a hundred million people it is important for the block because the more the numbers the more that block becomes influential. When you look at the countries that make up the original BRICS, they make 40 something percent of the entire globe population. Now, when you have Nigeria on board being one of the most populated African countries, then it is a plus. But besides that, Nigeria is influential in Africa and has a lot of minerals. It is also important among things or other things that you bring on the table. So they before, th th this is a personal opinion by the way, before they get you into their block, they look at what you bring on the table. Nigeria will give you numbers, but also stra its strategic location being in the central, in uh, West Africa, uh, uh, in between those West African countries and then uh, the minerals that it has. So it was key to also have Nigeria on board. The other country is Ethiopia. Ethiopia is, by the way, one of the most rapidly developing countries in Africa. It has a big population, but also has a lot of minerals that these people thought would tap into later on looking at things like is its a strategic location being in the horn of Africa. So you'll see that they have someone in East Africa, they have someone in North Africa, they have in Algeria, they have someone in South Africa, they have someone in West Africa. And now in the horn of Africa. So they are basically they have basically been strategic at picking countries to be part of the block. Then there is one big unifying factor throughout almost four or five members of these countries that join the block from Africa is River Nile. Before I even come to Uganda, River Nile is one of that unifying factor among the five countries that they brought that they brought on the block river nile starts in uganda it goes through ethiopia it is to egypt and i want to believe it extends beyond egypt and having waters is very key for strategic blocks they must have access 
to big, big oceans, if not oceans, big lakes, if not big lakes, big rivers. Because that's where they can set their infrastructures or that's where they can set their military bases or any other thing that they would like to put in the region. So being in the line, in the corridor that has River Nile is very, very important for the block. And I want to believe it was one of the reasons why some of these countries were selected to be, why some of these countries were selected to be part. Now, when it comes specifically to Uganda, there are reasons that I believe they looked at. One, Uganda is strategically important in East Africa, whether you want to believe it or not. I know there are so many people that will come out and say, oh, what are you talking about? There is Kenya, there is that. But when it comes to Uganda being influential in East Africa, it is a point that you cannot rule out for having helped them to become part of the bloc. But also, President UL7 himself is very strategic for Russia, China, I mean the entire BRICS, to align with. He's one man who is known for speaking bold against the West hegemony. And in the recent past, we've seen the foreign minister of Russia frequenting Uganda. There must have been discussions going on on how strategically this can be done. So his knowledge and wisdom, I am talking about President Yoram Seveni, must have been a very, very big factor. They looked at his influence in East Africa, but even beyond East Africa, in Africa at large. This man is very, very important, and therefore, there is no way they could rule him out. Someone might ask himself, why didn't they consider Kenya instead of Uganda? There are two or so reasons. One, when William Ruto had just become the president of Kenya, he was one of the people that came out to speak about the de-dollarization of the economy. But soon as he spoke that, he was called to the United States of America, had several meetings with Joe Biden, and as soon as he returned, he changed. His tone changed, and everything changed. And don't think that these countries, the BRICS, don't monitor. They monitor everything that goes on. So they felt like the tone for this gentleman that they had high hopes in had changed as though someone has been doctored and indoctrinated to again stay under the shadows of the West. But also, when you put on the weighing scale, you put William Ruto here and you put President Yoel Seven here, Seven weighs more. And if you're trying to look at the country that you should bring on board first, there is no way you can consider Kenya before Uganda. But Kenya has some advantages somewhere, but I think somehow, somewhere they are they were outweighed by what Uganda and President Museveni bring on the table. So basically, there is something that Africa has in this BRICS. There are so many people that are negative about it. They're saying, oh, this is going to be a group of dictators. This is Who is not a dictator? You mean there is no dictatorship in the NATO? Where the one or two countries decide to go and annihilate a certain race, a certain country of the map of this world, and you talk about dictatorship? in the BRICS. So dictatorship, if it's to be, if, if, it, if the point is about being dictatorial, then it's everywhere, even in the NATO countries. So that should be, that shouldn't be a point that people should be clinging on to say, oh, this block is not going to work out because all the countries are corrupt, all the countries are dictatorial. No, at least they never colonized Africa. They never took our ancestors into slavery. So, experts believe that there is something for taking, especially for African countries, that expanding the BRICS is something that will help African countries to position themselves in the globe. Please, Share, like, comment, and subscribe. 
one of the Congolese affairs, you know, analyst was quoted saying that actually he sees a lot of African countries joining because Africa wants a new world power that would crush the existing global power and some of them would join for various reasons, including improving their own economies and trade. And that is very true. He continues to say that being part of a much larger whole is a valuable ambition. You know today, strategic materials, I'm talking about cobalt, zinc, coltan, and other mining materials that make China powerful come from DRC. So it won't be shocking at one point, much as they were not even put among the designated countries this time, but at one point DRC will have to come on board because of one, its size, but also the minerals that are in the West. So you see there is something for the taking for the, the BRICS original members and then something for Africa as well. There will be some security guarantees if, if DRC joins the BRICS. At least they are sure that, okay, maybe Russia could train their soldiers or maybe they will give them some uh, uh, peacekeepers so that there is a little bit of sanity returning in the DRC. Other than, you know, countries just bombarding DRC and, and then taking all the minerals for their own benefit. So BRICS is bringing dynamism that Africans have not seen for some time. Remember, Africans were dealing with old systems, systems that they have known through slavery, slave trade, colonialism, imperialism, and all that. So, we basically continue to see Russia as a valuable ally for Africa, a valuable friend who supported by the way South Africa from the beginning, from the days of the struggle against apartheid. And this was, you know, hard being retaliated by Cyril Ramaphosa when, you know, confronted with questions of how his country was going to benefit. So basically, Russia is coming with a lot of proposals for Africans. And I think it is something that is working for countries like Egypt with energy and gas plant in the region called El Daba nuclear plant. How many nuclear plants has the United States of America or UK or any member of the NATO helped Africa to build? They cannot allow you to have that because if you have that, then you put, you're becoming a threat to them. But there's someone who is valuing the efforts of Africans and wants them to develop to the same pace like the rest of the world. Why don't you be part of that party? Why don't you become a friend to that person who wishes well for you? The past decade has seen an uptick in commercial and strategic engagements between Africa and the BRICS nations. And these constitute Africa's trading partners, the largest African trading partners and new investors. So there is a shift from Europe in terms of trade to the Far East now. Africa is finding more peace trading with the BRICS nations than it does with the West. So the BRICS coming to Africa is to show the global system that members can do business on a leveled ground. Have you ever heard of an, Europe in an European Union proposing an inclusion of an African country into their, partners, into their partnership? No, but BRICS has done it for Africa. What does that mean? They want to give Africa a platform. They want to give Africa a chance to equally develop. It might not be at the same pace because you cannot develop and out to develop China right now or Russia, but at least you go to a certain level. And we're not saying that joining the BRICS does not come with its own risks. They are there definitely. Exploitation of resources, uh, you know, expatri expatriation, uh, so many things. You're going to find China so much deep-rooted in Africa, but it is better than imperialism, colonialism, and slave trade. So I, I don't understand when you hear someone saying that Africa is not going to benefit from this 
grouping that Africa is not going to benefit from the BRICS. It's going to benefit beyond what you can recognize. And I pray that so many countries continue to join if they are given a chance. Because that is what needs to be done for Africa to develop. They need someone who is going to give them a leveled ground for development. So definitely these countries, the six African countries that are now members or at least in alliance with the BRICS are going to definitely benefit. There will be some bit of repercussions here and there. Expect the United States of America and the UK to retaliate. One, they are going to probably, we're going to see more sanctions on these countries, especially the heads of states and some of the close people. We're going to see the cutting of aid. We're going to see accumulation of dates. We're going to see cases coming up. We're going to see beyond all that eruption of riots and demonstrations in these different countries. Believe me, you. But at the end of the road, at the end of the tunnel, there is a ray of hope. You're going to start seeing riots in these different countries. In Uganda, they run against you. They put money in, uh, in, in the population and the opposition leaders so that they can, they can oust you. You're going to see them in Nigeria. You're going to see them in Algeria, Egypt, everywhere else. Because they believe they should be the epitome of everything in the world. And now things are changing and then they are not willing to accept. Things are changing and they are not willing to accept the reality. That's what I thought we would discuss today on Africa Uncovered YouTube channel. If you think that it really carries water, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. It is very important for us because when you subscribe, like, comment and share, then the algorithm of YouTube is able to push us. And by the time you know, our channel is blowing. So please share, like, comment and subscribe. Otherwise, from me to you, I am TJ. Adiós.